Scientists, funded through the federal government's $46.2 million climate change research program, are investigating whether plants that have been in Australia for millions of years could be integral to reducing methane emissions. Associate Professor Phil Verko from the University of Western Australia has been working on forage trials to reduce methane emissions for the past three years and says that producers don't traditionally see Australian native plants as valuable livestock fodder. So producers haven't uh, looked to Australian native foragers traditionally because they've seen them either as not being uh, you know, valuable from a nutritive value point of view or because they don't produce enough biomass. And people have investigated these foragers before, the native um, uh, plants before, but they've been looking for a plant that does a lot of things. It's got good biomass, it's got good nutritive value, and it's unlikely that we're going to find a silver bullet like that. So the innovative part of this is that we're saying that you can have a mixture of these shrubs and together, or combined, they'll provide those things. So some will produce the biomass, some will produce the right nutritive um, or nutritional um, aspects of the diet and others will hopefully is what we've been finding in the lab at least is that they'll reduce or help reduce methane production uh, from the from the grazing livestock. This unique project is just one of 39 research projects coordinated by Meat and Livestock Australia through the Reducing Emissions from Livestock Research Program, RELP. The Western Australian Foragers Project has investigated the role that diet plays in methane generation. Well, we really started the work looking at trying to fill a gap particularly in the feed supply where we have a distinctly seasonal productivity cycle and, and we're very short on high quality feed for a large part of the year and struggle when there's extended drought periods which is something we know we have to really have to deal with. So we went back to look at, at some of the native plants that are growing already in Australia and know that they survive the climate but how can we build them into a production system that's manageable for the producer um, and leads to good levels of production from the animal in terms of weight gain and animal health. Dr Ravel says the results in terms of productivity have been positive. We've just finished grazing this site here and the, the sheep have gained weight in autumn at a time of year that they're most constrained by feed supply and we've had no supplementary feed provided to the animals so they've gained weight um, in a satisfactory fashion and we've maintained ground cover also to a satisfactory level and we're um, at the beginning of assessing the, the production of methane from these animals as well. Professor Verko says they are looking for ways to influence the fermentation process in the rumen of grazing animals, of which methane is a byproduct. What we've been looking at with these shrubs is, is for plants that have compounds that can influence that fermentation to reduce the amount of methane that's produced. And methane is an energy loss uh, to, the, the, to the system. So an animal consumes the feed, it has a certain amount of energy, and if methane's produced, it's an energy loss. So that's energy that could be used for production, but it's being lost as methane. So there's really dual benefits from finding plants that have compounds that reduce that methane production. Now, there are synthetic products out there that, that we've, have been demonstrated to manipulate that fermentation and reduce methane. But there's a general uh, sense in the community that the, the less additives that we have, the, you know, it's probably a better thing. Although reductions in methane have been proved in the lab, Dr Raval explains the importance of further testing of animal populations in the paddock. So to measure the methane in this setting, we're using technology for the first time in Australia that had been established overseas. But putting it into practice here um, is unique and that's to place animals in a portable blow-up tunnel effectively where we can quantify all of the gases that, that, it, that leave that tunnel and methane is one of them so that we can get a, a basic measure really for the first time as I say in these sorts of conditions of, of the level of methane produced from animals that are grazing these particular forages. However, these native shrubs aren't intended to replace traditional pastures. The native foragers we've been working at will always only be an add-on to the existing pasture base. So even at the peak time of utilisation, it might be a third of the diet that the animals are selecting could be from the native shrubs, maybe up to a half in some circumstances, but normally about a third. So that means the management of the, the pasture that's growing underneath the shrubs or in between the shrubs, absolutely critical to get that right. And we really see the shrubs as a form of standing supplement. So they bring to the feed source something that the pastures don't. And it's the, the addition of both components that, that will lead to 
productivity and profitability gains. Although still early days, farmer Greg Richards can already see some benefits from these trials on his property in Querreting, Western Australia. Now we've had this forage trial for a couple of years on the property now. This is the first year we've been able to, to actually use it. The, the first winter and autumn was all about letting the plants grow. But yeah, look, since the boys are finished, um, I've had my sheep on it. So while they're grazing this, uh, these shrubs, I'm not actually hand feeding the sheep. So that has to be a plus has to be a plus and, and it's going to be interesting in, in um, as to whether we should have more more forage plants to, to, to fill that gap in. Traditionally January, February, March, April, May can be can be very light on for pasture and, and you know we do do a lot of hand feeding in those months so if these shrubs can fill a gap that would be fantastic yeah yep. So certainly they appear to be a bit more hardy and tougher than the annual cloves and ryegrass um, that, 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 that do struggle that do struggle, you know, we've, the barley grass will seem to, to grow in anything, but the, these shrubs have performed well, yeah, yeah. One plant in particular, Eremophila glabra, which can tolerate harsh growing conditions, has been shown to reduce methane production in livestock by between 80 and 90 per cent. In addition to methane production, Professor Verko says that Eremophila has also been shown to have other production benefits. Eremophila is not only interesting from a methane point of view, um, but we know animals eat it, and that's that's good for, for productivity. But also, we've we in a separate uh, line of work, we were looking at its uh, the potential for it to influence that fermentation and reduce the chances of uh, acidosis, uh, the development of acidosis, where animals go may change their feed, go on to a, a grain-based diet too quickly, they can get uh, a, a a condition called acidosis and we've found that Eremophila has the potential to try and minimise the risk of that happening. Well for all of the encouraging results we've got in, in the field, for people to apply them and for it to interact with government policy, two things have to come into play. One is it has to be profitable and manageable for the farmer. So to be able to show the true benefits and the costs of doing something differently are really critical. So animal productivity and how that plays out in farm profit, absolutely critical in order to get any change in practice. And the other is to get basic information initially and then build on that over time on the level of methane that will be produced from these grazing systems so that if it becomes part of a carbon farming initiative, it's based on real numbers that stand the test of comparison and, and peer review. The Climate Change Research Program funded research projects and on-farm demonstrations to help prepare Australia's primary industries for climate change and build the resilience of Australia's agricultural sector into the future.